What you see here is Kali Linux fully configured running inside of Windows, running inside of VMware's VirtualBox software, totally virtualized, and for the most part also isolated from the host operating system. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to set this up in the quickest way possible and the most reliable way possible. And I'm going to show you some quirks in the Kali Linux docs that may have prevented you or would have otherwise prevented you from easily installing Kali Linux on a Windows machine. So this video will walk you through start to finish and there shouldn't be any interruptions. So you can get straight to pen testing or any other form of security research once you've completed this tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is download and install VirtualBox. And we can do that by clicking on the download VirtualBox button. In this case, I'm on 6.1.28, but whatever version you have, as long as it's above that should be fine. So you're gonna find this link that says Windows Hosts. You're gonna click it and it's gonna initiate a download right here. And you can see VirtualBox 6.1.28, etc. We're gonna click on that download and we're gonna walk through the installer. Now upon installation, you can start VirtualBox and you'll see that the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager pops up, but you don't have any operating systems to run from within VirtualBox. So that brings us to the next step. So the next step is to download the correct Kali Linux distribution. So we're here at Kali.org and we see the big orange download button and we're gonna click it. Now it tells us there's a lot of options. There's an option for ARM machines, the cloud, bare metal containers, virtual machines, etc. We do want to click virtual machines. However, there's some caveats here. So we're gonna click on this virtual box download link, the direct download on the left, and we're gonna start downloading Kali Linux. However, there's a documentation section right here, and if you click it, you'll note that it tries to walk you through the installation and configuration process for Kali Linux given the download you just started. Now I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that this entire section here is no longer relevant, and if you try to follow along, you're gonna get stuck because you won't actually be able to make use of this image that you're downloading. Now why is that? Well, let's skip ahead until the image is downloaded on my machine. So the Kali Linux image has been downloaded on my machine and I've moved it to this folder. It's under my tools operating systems and you can see it actually right here. And I'm putting it alongside an ISO image just to reflect the difference. Previously, when you installed Kali Linux, you installed it from an ISO, but the newest versions of Kali Linux that are pre-built for VirtualBox actually use this OVA file format. It's called Open Virtualization Format Archive. And so if you go through the steps to add an ISO to your virtual box, it'll actually crash. So instead what we wanna do is ignore all the steps on Kali.org. We wanna to go to File, and we want to go to Import Appliance. So it says Source Local File System, and then what we'll do is we'll go to that Tools Operating Systems and of course import the OVA file that we downloaded from Kali Linux. Now when we click next, we'll notice a familiar screen. If you download the ISO and you went through the steps of configuring Kali, you notice that a lot of these steps right here, a lot of these configuration um, settings, appliance settings, are actually parts of the configuration that you used to have to go through in order to install Kali on VirtualBox. Now this OVA Open Virtualization Format Archive brings in the majority of settings with it. And you can change these settings here if you'd like. But it's very simple. You simply click import, you agree to the GPL v3 agreement, which is the licensing agreement, and you wait a couple minutes for VirtualBox to both import Kali Linux and apply all the correct settings that you used to have to apply manually. Once Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager is done with its import, you'll notice that you have a VM inside of VirtualBox that's called Kali Linux slash version number slash VBox slash whatever type of processor and architecture you're using. Now on the right hand side, you can look to confirm that it was configured correctly. You'll see 
Mine has a base memory of about 2 gigs. It has max 2 processors. It's been allocated up to 80 gigabytes of hard drive space, etc. And in the description down here, you have some notes on the default username and password, which you can change later, as well as some links to support documentation, for example, Kali.org, docs, tools, and the forums, as well as the IRC channel. So it's as simple as clicking start and waiting for Kali Linux to boot up. Now, the first thing you have to do is click enter and the default credentials are Kali and Kali. So username Kali, password Kali. Click login. Wait a couple minutes. Sometimes the scaling is off and you have to uh, reposition the window for a virtual box. But once you've done that, you now have access to a fully fledged Kali Linux operating system running within Oracle VirtualBox inside of your host operating system of Windows. So this is one great way to get started with Kali Linux without having to install it directly onto your hardware or having to get a dedicated device. We can now access all the functionality of Kali Linux from within our Windows machine.